Uh, it's it's huge because until then I was winging it. You know, the the weight quitting part of the sport is cloaks and daggers, and you're trying you're you're overhearing conversations and you're googling. Mm. So you know, I was it was, it was pretty much guesswork on 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 my end. You know, I got him to 145, um, nearly 20 times on my own. But when we brought George in, the, and it wasn't even just about making weight. What I what I noticed with him was that every session was um, productive. There was no sessions where it was, he didn't have the pop in his shots or soreness or, you know, that, that, that would just be a normal part. Whereas when we brought in George, um, that, that was a lot, uh, each session was a lot more effective. So it wasn't just about making the weight, it was making the training camp um, where he was improving the whole way through it. He got down to 145 a couple times and it, he looked like, like a monster. Yeah. He looked like a zombie. Yeah. It was terrifying. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean that that had to play a big part in your decision to no longer have him fight at that weight. Yeah, class, right? yeah. I mean, I, we'd already <laughs> gone up to one fifty five. His his final fight before going to the UFC was was at one fifty five, and I was kind of like, oh, thank God, you know, this is this is suiting him better because when he joined, he was a sort of a scrawny sixteen, seventeen year old, but then he start becoming <laughs> a man. So getting down there was getting scarier and scarier. And then his last fight outside the UFC, I thought he looked fantastic. It was a handy weight cut. Um, and he just looked I just said he looked like a tank now the offer came in a couple of weeks later Sean emailed me and said uh, we're offering you a 145 fight in uh, in April and of course I told Connor and he's screaming and running around we didn't care what weight class if he had said 125 we would have we would have done it right Sean specifically wanted us at 145 and we sort of went we went back to you know back to that lighter weight class and it was almost accidental and then as soon as we got the opportunity, he went back up again. Yeah, he looked very thick at the weigh-ins. He, he looks heavier. He looks bigger. Yeah, and it, you know that, that's a part of you know the life cycle of an athlete. If you're with the same guy for over a decade, you're going to see changes. You know, he's 30 now. He's not 18 anymore. It's it, there is these different things going on in his life. So you, have, you know, it's that's the benefit I think of working with someone for a long period of time rather than you know kind of gym hopping that you you, you you'll know what they can and can't do. And he does a lot of unconventional training, right? In terms of like physical conditioning. Like I know, he, is he still doing that? All, the, the, all that stuff with Ido Portal? Yeah, anytime Ido's in in, in Europe, he, he he tends to drop into Ireland. We have a great relationship with him, and he'll play around with that. I, you know, the reality is, he's most of our time is going to be spent on the fundamentals of MMA. And the great thing with Ido is, he's he, he, especially in training camp, he'll come in near the end where. You're just tired of doing single leg defenses. You're tired of doing pad work. And he comes in, he does all these fun games. So we're still working out. We're still, he's firing his brain in different ways. He's, he's working on coordination, on balance. For me, as the, you know, the head trainer, it's like, it's a nice break. Mm. You know, it's a, I, um, I'm sure it was John, John Wayne Parr I heard say that, you know, when you have a fight coming up, you know how many miles you're going to run. You know how many kicks you're going to throw. Every now and again, you want to come in and want to do some on back. Uh, jumping in the air, spinning right. elbows and stuff, because <laughs> it breaks the monotony. Uh, yeah. MMA is, is fantastic, is, is, you know, because it's all the martial arts together. It's, you're almost never going to get bored because you can always do something different. But it's still, there's still a, a, a repetitiveness to it that it's nice to break with something unusual. Now, how much does training change when you're dealing with a specialist? Like a guy like Khabib, who is just a, a grappling phenom. How much... Do you shift the emphasis of the training to take down defense, working on grappling? And do you work mostly take down defense, or do you just work overall wrestling so that take down defense becomes a part of that as well? Um, all of that. All of that. <laughs> um, but, yeah, definitely, uh, we maybe talk about it later. Like, uh, if there's one thing I could change is that I think I was too defensive in, in my mindset for this training camp. But... Uh, Habib has very specific types of takedowns depending on where he is whether it's shooting on the low single on the, in the middle and then on the fence I, I, you know long before Conor was shoot to fight him I loved watching him I'm, that's kind of my area is the fence I just love right from the Randy Couture days how to use the fence and, and Habib does it to a, you know, a new level um, you know one of the takedowns he hit on Conor he hadn't actually done it until the Alicuinta fight so it was nice that we Kind of got to see that the high crotch. I, I, I see a bit of DC in that the high crotch and then trip on the far leg. And I think he blocked it once, but he did catch him with it. Um, so you know, there's very specific takedowns. Um, definitely for this training camp, it was the most specific that we went. And then I remember about a week out or, or whenever it was, he did an interview and he said, 
well, if, if he doesn't make it, well, I'll fight Tony. I don't care who it is. And I was going, damn it. <laughs> I hadn't even looked at Tony's fights in so long. So me and the other coaches mm. like start like, okay, <laughs> quick, what does he do again? Oh, yeah, he has that yeah. style. Um, because we were so specific for this one. Um, Tony could possibly be a fight in the future. When when you when you think about the future now after the Khabib fight, how what do you what are you thinking? Are you thinking about uh, just rest, let the dust settle, and then look at the landscape? Like what? How do how do you approach it? Now? Uh, I might, but he doesn't. <laughs> what does he? <laughs> He's think? screaming and shouting for the rematch within minutes. It's hard to push for that rematch though after that fight, right? Sure. No, I I, I understand the logic of that you know tony's kind of earned and stuff but mm -hmm. i also understand this is a, a business and it, it would be a huge fight you know the rematch would be a huge fight Do you, it, don't you think that it would be difficult to sell because of how dominant khabib was in that fight um sure uh, uh, i do think the round three showed promise um i, I like i said i i, I would like to have changed things up a little bit specifically a more offensive mindset i thought defensively we did quite well um but offensively we weren't really where we usually are and and, and you know right when the fight was over i was thinking you know what i was kind of going into this like not to lose but not to win you know mm. and his shots weren't as crisp as they normally are he had opportunities to hit him especially in the third round and he just it seemed to be the range or the touch. Something was off. No, how much of it well. had to do with the fact that he hadn't fought MMA in two years? Absolutely. You know, had to, right? Yeah, of course, of course. And we tried to mimic it as close as we could in the gym. And I brought in guys that he didn't know. And I would say, this is fight day. And he, did, you, you know, he would do with George exactly what he's going to do on fight day. And we'd have a referee. And so was, to, to, to get the fight feel, but it's still in the gym, which right. means... You know, is he at a position now where every fight has to be a gigantic super fight? And is that is that a problem in that? You know what I thought after the fight, after it was all over, I was like, you know what a good fight would be would be him versus Pettis. I'm like that would be a really good fight. And it would be a really interesting fight in terms of stylistic matchup. And it would be a great fight, I think, for Connor to sort of. Just get a wild three round, or I guess it would probably be a main event. It would be five rounds, mm -hmm. but uh, it would be a wild fight yeah. that would probably favor him. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the the boxing, ha you know, when Tyson Fury was kind of coming back, mm -hmm. they gave him a yes. You know, not the toughest guy in the world. That shit doesn't happen but, in but MMA. But it doesn't happen in MMA. Well, specifically it doesn't happen in the UFC. UFC. Specifically yeah, the UFC. Specifically. Um, yeah, and I th there's an issue with that, I think. Yeah, you know, he, he was. He, uh, you know, at, in his, at his early stages, he was fighting all the time. Mm -hmm. and, it, and as is natural, as you get older and as you achieve more, it is going to start becoming, you know, once or twice a year. Right. That's just a natural progression of an athlete. I don't care who you are. But the wild fights that he could have at 155 pounds, whether it's James Vick or Justin Gagey or Pettis, or there's good fights for him yes. that aren't necessarily Khabib, they aren't necessarily Tony Ferguson, but they're a good fight to get that timing back, get everything locked in, you know. 100%, but you, you have to factor in his personality. And he's only fighting now for fights that are really interesting to him. He's not that interested in anybody. Else. Not that I've Floyd heard. Floyd Mayweather paper. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. problem. <laughs> All that money, 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 money. Right. So, you know, <laughs> yeah. what, what more can he, you know, even with his spending, what well, more can he Well, the idea would be the, the eye on the future and uh, the eye on the rematch. You know, like getting everything dialed in so that when he does have a rematch with Khabib, he is samurai sword sharp. Yes, sir. Yeah. As opposed to having two years off, one one boxing fight in between them, and, and then such a grappling-heavy contest. Yeah, I, I don't disagree. That would be a trainer, you know, for me as a trainer, that would be the ideal. But it would be hard to motivate him for that. I think it would be hard to motivate him, and it's it's not the, you know, it's not really the UFC model. It's... Right. It was obvious it was going to be those, you know what I mean? It was going to be those but two. But if anybody could tell the UFC what time it is, it's Connor. Khabib time. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if anybody is the guy that can say, hey, this is what I want. I want a fucking tune-up fight. I want, a, I want a tough guy. He, he, he absolutely could. Yeah. And he absolutely wouldn't. You know, <laughs> it was like when, when, when he lost the Tiaz one fight. Yeah. And... Uh, Backstage, he was screaming and shouting at, 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 at all the top brass about getting the rematch at 170 as right. quick as possible. I'm, I'm, I'm in the background going, no, oh, please don't. <laughs> Did you not see that fight? That, he's a terrifying uh, individual. Right. Let's get a 155 fight and, and, and you know, yeah. okay, maybe you meet him again, but 
he was not letting that go. And you right. know, four months later, he fought the the exact same guy. Whereas, and that's where he is right now with Khabib. That's all I'm. That's all I'm hearing from. Yeah. These. Well, listen, you could sell it for sure, especially with uh, the fucking chaos after the fight. Mm. You know, just yeah. keep Dylan Dennis at home. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's grounded. <laughs> yeah. So with. What would you do differently? Um, like I said, from a, from a strategy point of view, my number one thing would be to be more to think more offensively. That we definitely had opportunities to land shots. I and mean, when Connor lands shots, you know, you know, watch the Eddie fight back again. It's, it doesn't take him a whole lot of shots. Uh, he rarely misses. You know, even if if you look at strikes that didn't land, those strikes were for a reason. They were to see what way he holds his hand, see what he moves mm-hmm. like. You know, I used to love watching Anderson Silva back in the day, and I, I thought they were, you know they have a similar kind of approach. Uh, but this one, we, we just didn't seem to be landing. And my only, when I look back at the training camp, I, we did spend most of our time with a defensive mindset, and and that, I think that's a mistake. 